today we're at SeaWorld here in Orlando mm -hmm. and we're here for this weekend. It is called the Inside Look. It's a special event that they do once a year and it's basically some of the animal exhibits. You get to go behind the scenes and mm -hmm. see, you know, how they're living and what's going on and yeah. what you don't normally see in the shows and things like that. So we're excited. Yeah. There's one for the dolphins, there's one for the killer whales, there's one for the penguins, the, the sea seals, lions. yeah. So there's a bunch, so we're gonna check them out, see what we can show you. I don't know if we'll be able to show you all the behind the scenes stuff, I don't know, but if we can, we will. Yeah, so. we're not sure what we can film, but we're taking you along with us today, so you're ready to go have some fun? Let's do it. Let's do it! Woo! We are Kim and Aaron, and this is Zach and Cody. We are best friends living and traveling full time in our renovated RV, Lucy. We have been on the road since October 2020, so please subscribe to join in on all the fun. RV TV, K and E RV TV, sing it with us. So this event is included with your mission. It doesn't cost any extra anything. We're here at the Dolphin one, the inside the Mammal Marine Care, but the line's already full. There's only uh, certain times for some of them, so let's go on to the next one. Let's see what we can do. My favorite thing, the Stingray Lagoon is closed. It's closed for refurbishment. Not sure when it'll be back open. Here's a look at Manta. It was a 60 minute wait. Watch this part. This is the worst part right here. Ooh, this part. Oh, you feel like you're gonna die. Such a fun roller coaster. Highly recommend it. Okay, so we made it to number three, which is inside Antarctica, Empire of the Penguins. The wait just to see the penguins, the exhibit alone, not the inside look, was 60 minutes. So we'll see how long this line is. So I don't think there's a long wait at all. I don't know if you can see me either. It's very dark in here. Yeah. There's a little light on you. Of the penguin. Yeah, well, this, you is, the penguin this is the old Empire of the Penguins ride that they don't even use anymore. But this is where the line is. Feels like we're breaking the rules, meaning. Right? <laughs> it's cool. It still smells like the penguins. I think the penguins are behind that door. They're sticky. It's a penguin! Hi! They are warm weather penguins. Aww. So they are found at the bottom tip of South America, specifically Argentina and Chile. Aww. So they like their habitat about 50, 60 degrees. You can find them on their coastlines of nice beach areas. And they like to also find the grass and hard rock or fluff areas. That's kind of their natural habitat, and that's why we kind of simulate that where they have their grass, tons of little rocks. Um, they are colonial birds because they are also prey animals. Um, so stuff that would go after some Magellanics or sharks, certain seals, and even um, killer whales as well. Have that silver colored looking feathers. These are their teeth. They're only about two years old. No. And the penguins usually will reach full adult you're so cute. Hi. Oh, hello. He's so cute. He keeps coming over here sticking his head out. Hi. Uh -huh. um, and he's very curious about what's going on and he likes to kind of follow you throughout and be aware of what's going on. Um, so he's just kind of checking you guys out. This is enriching for him. Um, he's very investigative. So it's not only fun for you guys to see them, but it's fun for them as well. <laughs> he's so adorable. Can we take him home? So Magellanics are kind of fun. They have the highest bite force of any penguin. He's coming yeah. to say hello. Hi, George. Uh, so I nicknamed them chicken. Oh. Uh, that's how suspicious they are. And they have, you have to win their love. They're so cool. They're so cute. Look, this is inside the ride, too. See so the big screen that they used to play. And then the ride would end over yeah. here at the penguins, which we're going to get a closer look right now. These are the cold weather penguins. If you guys are all the way up against this lovely ice sculpture in the front and look on over, you'll see a bunch of king penguins. Those king penguins, if they have a lovely pouch over their feet, they are actually incubating an egg. So it is our king penguins breeding season. They'll be laying eggs and we'll be checking them every day to make sure they are all good. And that is our first species. Another species that's easy to see right off the bat is the gentoo penguin. If you see any penguins with a lovely white strap going from one ear over to the other, it looks kind of like a set of headphones. Those are our gentoos. 
Another species of penguin we have in here are our deli yeah, penguins. Right. They are going to be kind of that tuxedo look, white on the front, black on the back. Yeah. And they have a white ring around their eyes. They kind of look like they have googly eyes. <laughs> These are foamy little eyebrows, and they're going to be. Those are the rock hoppers. There's one actually right up here. Oh my god, I think these are babies. These are babies. Those are some chicks. <gasps> There's another one. So here. those are actually Adelie chicks underneath Genty penguins. Oh when they were eggs, their parents were not the best parents. Sometimes we have some penguin parents that like to play soccer with their eggs. Obviously, that's not okay. So we have fostered them out to some awesome Gentoo parents. So those are two little Adelie chicks. He was just moving down there. You can see like his little face. Your head so warm. There he is. Oh my god. <laughs> so cute. Almost too big for the nest. Mm -hmm. And now we're in the real penguin exhibit like in the 30s that everybody else is waiting a 60 minute wait for and we didn't wait at all. Yes. Inside we did the inside look at where it's <laughs> But it's freezing in here. Oh, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> It's 32 degrees in here and there's over 200 penguins in this exhibit. And this section is wide open. You're in the same room with the penguins. Oh, they're so cute. Definitely a cool exhibit here. Uh, seeing those penguins is so cool. But now we're at the Pacific Point Preserve. Number four is the inside look for the sea lions. For our seals and sea lions. Get ready for the inside look for the sea lions. We did this last year and we really, really enjoyed it. It's nice to see how they care for the animals and they're living their best lives here at SeaWorld, so yeah. <laughs> it's cracking up there with this beautiful new paint job. It's like this weird green color. And the supports are the same like kind of teal that uh, Mako is. This is a floorless coaster. Ah! So we're going to head down our stairs here into uh, kind of our backstage area. There's going to be a couple rectangles on the ground. Just ask that you step into those. It's just a way to keep any gunk from your feet from getting into our back areas as well as any gunk from our back areas getting out here. Um, it's really shallow. You shouldn't get your feet wet at all. Mm -hmm. so just a quick step in there uh, and then I'll meet you at the bottom of the stairs and we'll, we'll go over some stuff before we go and see our animals. So you got to walk through this to get all the gunk off your shoes. Pretty sure it like, sanitizes. Okay. You hear again? Yes. Sanitizes soul. your soul. Sanitizes your soul. <laughs> your soul needs to be sanitized. Right. Access to all the different areas we would need uh, to care for our animals back here. So I'll just kind of go over what everything is. This building right here is our human building. Um, I use that term lightly. Um, we have our showers, our bathrooms, our laundry room, uh, everything, office, things like that for record keeping. All of that's going to be in here. However, we have animals that can come out of the water and can walk around quite easily outside of the water. So as enrichment, we will take them into different areas where they might not spend a lot of time. Um, so we might have a trainer who's taking a sea lion right through our office, uh, right through the hallway here to get to our scale room on the far side of this building. Uh, you never quite know what you're going to get every single day, so you might have a sea lion uh, behind you while you're doing some work on the office. So it, it's pretty fun. Um, and it's pretty unique to this area here. On the far side of this building, you'll see that like teal blue awning. I see that. That's our sea lion and otter stadium. That's where we're going to do our shows. If you were to go through the store right here and make your way through it, you would eventually make it onto the stage for our show. Oh wow, that's cool. So all the animals that you'd see in our our uh, our sea lion and otter spotlight are going to live over here. Um, it's a horseshoe shape, so on the outside of the horseshoe all of our otters live. On the inside of the horseshoe is where all of our sea lions live, and then on the far side is where our Pacific walrus lives. Um, it's a series of different pools and hallways, things like that, that we can open up, um, give access to different areas and things like that. Back there we also do have an area, so if any animal has a surgery or anything like that, you can't have immediate access excuse me, to uh, water. Um, we have a room that we can completely drain the water out of. And then we can slowly fill that up to about two feet of water um, before they have access to deep water again. So we have a lot of different rooms back there that's a variety of different purposes, um, as well as the animals that call that back area home. 
So if you see the show today, I encourage you to pay attention to the animals that are coming out because each time you see Clyde or Seymour, it may not be the same sea lion. Mm -hmm. So not all of our animals know the same behaviors. Um, and so Clyde or Seymour might gain about two to three hundred pounds. <laughs> guys are out there. We have uh, eight sea lions that currently do the show. We have two that are in the process of learning some of those behaviors as well. That's cool. And then we have uh, eight otters as well that still do the show. So again, the otters might alternate. alternate. It's a little harder to tell them apart. Um, <laughs> but if you look really closely, you might be able to tell the difference between cool. them. Very cool. All the foods in those fridge. Once that fish is fully thawed, it's only going to stay thawed for 24 hours and then it gets thrown out if it's not used. So we want to make sure we're grabbing the exact amount every single day that we're going to need so we're not wasting anything. It's a multi step process, so. Um, Two people are going to come in at 5 a.m. They're going to thaw the fish that's in this right hand side cooler. Um, basically, we have giant sinks and then we're going to run uh, room temperature water over it until it's thawed. We're going to separate it into the different diets and then we're going to ice it, keep it safe for animals to eat. Then it's going to go into that left, side, left, left hand cooler. And then they're going to go to our deep freezer at the front of the park, grab all the fish we're going to need for tomorrow, put it in that free, uh, cooler. It's going to start the thawing process. The fridge at the front of the park is right around two degrees I believe, zero or two degrees. Um, ours is at uh, 36. So not super warm but it will start the process. So we're gonna head back into our uh, support hallway here. Oh my god it's slippery Aaron don't fall. Needs to get on and off the exhibit. It's also the door at the far end we can do the same thing through there. We've got just a storage closet right here. Um, in this pool right here uh, we have two of our harbor seals. This is Jackie and Jessica. Uh, so they're a mother-daughter duo. So Jessica is about 25 years old, uh, and Jackie is about eight years old. Um, they're a little more long-term residents of this back area. They have some more uh, long-term vet care that they need. Um, so Jackie is the smaller one. Jackie was actually born paralyzed. She's unable to use her back flippers. Aww. And for harbor seals, they use their back flippers to get around a lot more than a sea lion would. Um, they kind of swim side to side like a shark would using those back flippers to propel them. Well, every single year. Um, and we're just waiting for their blood results to come back and then they'll be able to go back out to the habit. But when we bring our moms back here, we want to make sure that we bring their pups with them um, so that if the pups need to nurse or anything like that, they, they are able to do that as well. So Dixon is Lojo's pup. So that was uh, Dixon and Flojo up there, and the puppies in the water. And then we also have uh, our vet clinic, so if they need to do any surgeries or anything like that, we have one on so uh, we can take our animals too for that. So these ones here are here for their yearly physical too, and then once it's done, they go back out in the exhibit. They're so curious. So we just made it out of the inside look. We're back out at the exhibit here. Where all the seals and sea lions are. That was really cool to go backstage. Ooh, look at this big boy right here. They uh, do have fish that you can buy and feed them, which is always a fun experience. Just be sure to watch out for these pesky birds because they will steal your fish. Oh, look at them playing. <laughs> so be sure to come back over here. Also, the, sh the um, sea lion and otter show is a really good show. Back over here at Pacific Point Preserve. All right, so last time I was here, it was for Christmas, and all the Christmas decorations were still up. This entire little lake area was full of the dancing Christmas trees that played the music and lit up so pretty. Now it looks really, really empty, but it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful day, like clear skies. And right over here, is Icebreaker, which is SeaWorld's new roller coaster, set to open this um, spring. And actually, because I'm an annual pass holder, I came to SeaWorld three times in December, so I earned a VIP pass to ride Icebreaker before it opens to the public. And I'm actually doing that at the end of this month. I'm super excited, so we'll see what that's all about. But please subscribe if you, <laughs> Kim's like smacking me. Please subscribe and you will um, get some notifications to see when that's coming up and when we have that video out. And if you've enjoyed this video so far, please give it a like. We appreciate it. Oh, there goes Mako. Well, there went Mako. Bye. So the next inside look, what are we doing, Erin? 
Sharks! We're doing the sharks. And preferably, we're right by Mako, which is a roller coaster here if you're not familiar with SeaWorld. Mako is the newest roller coaster to open. It's been a few years, but it's so smooth and it only has a tiny little lap bar. So, you get a lot of air time? It's exciting, yeah. <laughs> to the left, to the left. I love the Sky Harvey mural on the wall. Isn't it so beautiful? Great, a great photo spot. When there's not a bunch of strollers. Here we are inside the shark encounter, the shark exhibit. You go underwater in that tunnel, and today we're going up top. The shark line is like a mile long, and uh, we're gonna go check out another one. Maybe, maybe Wild Arctic. I know they have a beluga whale one. Maybe we can try to come back to this one. So because we're annual pass holders at the Watery Grill, they're giving away free beer today. So, um, looks like a long line, but I guess we'll wait in the long line for free beer, right? Absolutely. We won't wait in the long line for the sharks, but for we will beer? wait for the free beer. <laughs> so here in the Watery Grill, it's a quick service restaurant. They have actually pretty good food in here. They have like churrasco and stuff. And right there is actually the pass, pass holder lounge. You can go in there, they, they have free sodas and everything in there. Let me go fill up my cup. And uh, this is where you get the free beer at. I think it's a little, it's a little cup, maybe like six ounces. But hey, free beer. X. That means we got beer already. <laughs> and it's only the four you see at the end. Four we see at the end. Okay. Ooh, I see Hershey's. Yangling Hershey's Porter. Big Storm. Christmas Ale. What's the lightest one? <laughs> okay, I'll do that one. We're in the pass holder lounge with our brewskis. Soda machines are there. You do have to show your pass to get in here, so. Oh, look, now they didn't have this in your last one. An actual kiosk where you can handle some oh, the pass holder business, so you don't have to go to guest services. Oh. Very convenient. Yeah, because there's a lot of benefits when you're oh, a pass sure. holder. You get yeah. to print out. So let's grab a seat. We got our free beer. Cheers. Cheers. Wait, what, is yours good? The, that's the Yingling. Yingling Taco. Hershey, which I've seen in the grocery stores and I really wanted to try Sorry it. To make so. <laughs> I'm really happy that they have it here. I already forgot the name of mine. Mine was like the one that was all the way to the right. It's like a light spruce, spruce oh, yeah. ale, ale or yes. something. And this is the Yingling Hershey. And it has definitely like Hershey <laughs> notes at the Definitely has Hershey notes at the end. But I mean, I wouldn't say it's super chocolate forward, but it's pretty good. I could drink it. Smell chocolate. Yeah. I could drink it. If it's free, hey, whatever. Ah, free always tastes good, right? <laughs> and oh. we have our trusty Wawa pretzels. Yes. They taste just like pretzels you can get oh. in Magic Kingdom or somewhere around the park. Yeah. Cost less. Like a dollar or something. Yeah, we buy them in the sweet morning. Sweet cream cheese is mine. We buy them in the morning and we just came around and so we're hungry and we figure why not do pretzels and beer here in the pass holder lounge at Zero. Oh, and the beer was free for everybody. Not just yeah, we thought it was just pass holders though. For anyone in the park this weekend until Monday actually. But Martin, you, if you can't go back because they give you you burned it. Yeah, yeah. We're cut off. But yeah, so you wanna cheers? The whole pretzel? Already. I'm ripping it apart. <laughs> Cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. Even hours later. Mm-hmm. 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 Tight save money. <laughs> so we're just chilling here relaxing. In the, in the past number line. The past number line is popping. All of a sudden like everybody in the mother came. I must show myself. Uh, there was nobody in here and now everybody like all different types of food. Everyone's bringing their food in here, so it's crazy up there where all the people are everyone's in there. Well, and it's two o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. Saturday. Friday? Is it Friday? Friday. Saturday. Okay, Saturday. Yeah. Yesterday was Friday, first day of the Festival of the Arts. Oh yes, we went to the opening day of Festival of the Arts at Epcot and So we can link that video for you if you want to check that out. We had a lot of fun. It was crazy. People were waiting in line for over six hours for a figment popcorn bucket. It's crazy. Yeah, that's reality we're living in. People. And then they were selling them on eBay for two hundred dollars. Yeah, pretty. We could have made some money. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's the way to go. We don't appreciate that. But anyway, you know, you, you do what you do. But I think <laughs> no popcorn bucket would be worth six hours. Wait, right here, in our opinion. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron had one beer and she wants to get wet. Can I do it? No. This is where the rafts come down and they, you'll, it, it wets here. You don't get that wet though. You are wearing your Crocs. 
It is a beautiful day, but it's only like 70 degrees, but it is sunny. But it's beautiful out. It's been a beautiful weekend, but tomorrow is supposed to rain all day. Oh, it's taking too long. Taking too long. Taking too long. Where are we going? The walruses? Yes. I know, the beluga whales. Yes. You don't know what's happening. Nope, I'm having fun though. So we're so in the room. Erin's pretending to be a dolphin with her flippers. <laughs> There's fishing line on there. This is a little part of the inside look over by the beluga whales, but this is mainly uh, they're talking about uh, different camps that they have. Can you get it? Your dolphin, your dolphin flippers can't get it. Oh. So we're trying to. So we're trying to illustrate to children like if a dolphin or a sea turtle gets caught up in traps, they can't necessarily escape. Exactly. Uh, so here we have our rescue team. Uh, they're on call 24-7 if they get a call from like a local government agency or if we have a hotline. Uh, they'll go out, they'll rescue the manatees, the turtles, whatever, and keep their assistance. Uh, and the goal is to rescue, rehabilitate, and then release. Uh, so we have like specialized boats, we have specialized animal ambulances, uh, we have a veterinary staff on the property, we have different lab city blood tests, things like that. That's so cool. Uh, so, like, the manatees, the big problems they're facing right now are things like entanglement. Uh, they're getting cold stress with changing temperatures. They get almost like we get frostbite. They get like a skin rash. Uh, there's issues with like algae growing over the water that's killing off a lot of the ground vegetation. They get so there's starvation. Uh, and then also boat strikes are a big issue. Uh, I realize I pointed to that. That's a dolphin. Not no, I guess. But uh, <laughs> there's, there's the manatee. <laughs> but well, I didn't, I didn't All right. Have much, but it's, it's, it's All right, thank you, Chase. Oh. Have you seen this before? No. So this is a fishing net. So the fish go in here, but we have these metal bars in here, which is called a turtle exclusion device. So if a turtle swimming, it can't go through; it goes out. Oh my gosh! Very cool. Go zero, man. Thank you so much. For your time. Thank you. Wow. That's what it looks like on the inside. It's cool. This is a walrus head. And this is a manatee. This one is a polar bear. I don't know what I told you before. And that one is a manatee. Can you tell what these ones are? That one's a dolphin. And this one is a turtle. And that's a shark. What, what did you just learn? That elephants and manatees are cousins. What? That's how related they are. It's crazy. Their noses work the same. A manatee's mouth works just like uh -huh. the end of an elephant's trunk. trunk. And like they they all have they both have nails at the end of uh -huh. um, their extremities. Uh -huh. The elephants have it on their feet, and the manatees have it on their flippers. And it's the manatees crazy. get frostbite if it's under seventy degrees. The water's under seventy degrees. That's crazy. That's why they have to migrate to warm places in Stanford yeah. because we're always hot here. <laughs> or else they get like a skin burn. Yeah, that's so crazy. Well, I never knew that. And I happen to love manatees and elephants, so who knew? All right, we're trying to find the inside look for the beluga know. whales. It's somewhere over here by Wild yeah. Arctic. We're, we're, we're learning. All right, we found the inside look. Go behind the scenes. Inside Wild Arctic. Okay. Hopefully, we're going to see some beluga whales. Like behind the scenes. This is the new icebreaker coaster. Pretty cool, but we are waiting in line. But this is an area that normally guests cannot see behind Wild Arctic. So our animals here are very unique. Um, we actually house uh, harbor seals, beluga whales, and also Pacific walruses. Um, so the, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why they're so special is there are only six facilities in the country that house beluga whales, and there's only three facilities in the country that house walruses. Um, and of those three, we're the only currently successful breeding program um, it, for walruses in the entire country. So this area right here is the only place where you can see a baby walrus. <gasps> and her name is Cora. Uh, she is two years old, so maybe not technically a baby, uh -huh. more like a toddler walrus at this point. Um, but she is actually uh, about a thousand pounds, so she's wow. a thousand pound toddler. <laughs> Which is pretty striking. Little walruses are born pretty big and they grow fast. So that's definitely one thing we've learned here at Wild Arctic. Um, all of our animals are out on exhibit today. So after the end of the tour, we're going to let you guys end in the exhibit so you'll get a chance to see all those animals. 
And I do believe Cora is out on Habitat right now, so you definitely want to stop by and check her out on your way out today. For sure. Um, my job as an animal care specialist is to make sure all of those animals that I just talked I see about all the Christmas trees. have optimal welfare. So every day I come in trying to make sure the animals are living their best life. Um, so we're going to kind of show you guys a little bit of the behind the scenes things that go into giving them that optimal care. I know you guys see us a lot in the park um, feeding the animals and interacting with them, doing training sessions, things like that. Um, but there actually is a lot more that goes into providing optimal care. So that's kind of what we're going to give you guys a little glimpse of. We'll be checking out our enrichment program um, at Wild Arctic. And then we're also going to take a look at water quality and our food preparation for the animals. So all very, very important parts of the animal care that uh, we don't get a chance to highlight very often. So kind of a, a, an interesting thing to see and learn about. Um, this kind of leads into our back area, uh, but we're using this particular space uh, to showcase some of our enrichment. So I know you're seeing a lot of toys here. So this is actually about uh, probably like a tenth of the amount of toys that we actually have. At <laughs> we have a pretty expansive collection of enrichment. So um, basically what enrichment is designed to do is it's a, a designed to encourage the animals to perform natural behaviors. So uh, behaviors that the animals would normally exhibit in their natural environment, we also want them to do that here in zoological environments. So a uh, perfect example of that is this foraging device, which is one of many, many, many foraging devices we have at Wild Arctic. So the idea here is we're going to fill this with fish, clams, squid, jello sometimes. The animals like to eat jello sometimes, ice, things like that. We'll sink it to the bottom of the pool floor and we'll have the animals go and forage their food out super important for arctic animals because walruses will go down to the bottom of the ocean floor they'll stick their whiskers in the mud and look up clam look for clams beluga whales actually have flexible lips and they'll go down into rocks and spit water and suck out fish out of rock work and stuff so what this does is it lets them do that here and we'll do that with uh, different toys like this we also have a lot of other toys anything we can drill holes in we can hide food in it to encourage foraging which is really really cool Another really cool behavior we actually try to encourage is beluga whale rubbing. I don't know if you guys have seen our beluga whales, but a lot of times they'll go up to each other or maybe things that are in their environment and rub on them. It's super normal for beluga whales. They actually in the natural environment will sometimes migrate hundreds of miles to get to a site that's appropriate to rub on with gravel and substrate, things like that. So we offer them a lot of things to do that on here. We have this artificial kelp. A brush board behind you guys, which looks kind of silly. Looks mm -hmm. like a cleaning device, but actually, <laughs> it's a brush device. So cool. The brush has attached to a board, so the beluga whales can go and rub on it. So, Wild Arctic has one of this the biggest water, water systems in the park. Um, ours, our system holds 1.2 million gallons of salt water. Um, so, we do not pump it in from the ocean. Our California park actually does use natural bay water because they live right on the coast. Mm. Um, but Florida, oh, Orlando is a little too far inland, so we man make our own. Um, so basically what that looks like is in a huge basin like this, um, we would fill it with fresh water and then add in all of the salts and minerals and trace elements, everything that makes it as similar to ocean water as we can. Um, and then it gets filtrated and dispersed among all of our habitats. So as we turn the corner, you'll kind of get an idea of what that filtration looks like. It's pretty massive <laughs> and pretty complicated actually. Um, we have an entire department called the Water Quality Department that is completely in charge of making sure the water is top quality uh, for our animals to live in. Wow. They're actually here around the clock. We're not even here all the time. This is all behind the scenes. Um, but the Water Quality Crazy. Team is here all through the night checking the water at regular intervals to make sure salinity is right, the temperature is correct, and that the animals are living in an optimal environment. Color-coded to... Uh, Whoa. Um, to uh, designate different statuses of the water within the filtration system. So green water, for example, the green pipe is out of the exhibit to be filtered and dark blue is clean and going back to the habitat. So that's kind of a little brief uh, overview of how it works. And then we have all of our sand filters over here. So there's 12 total. They each move about a thousand gallons a minute. So total 1.2 million gallons goes through the whole thing and it's completely turned over in about an hour and a half. So uh, pretty good, <laughs> pretty fast, pretty impressive. And um, our water quality team is, does an awesome job with keeping the water pretty, pretty healthy. We are going into the kitchen, I think. This is where they make all the fish in the wild Arctic. And here on this board is all the animals that are in this exhibit. And they're all color coded. 
And then this is how many pounds of fish they eat. So Garfield's the walrus here. He eats 56 pounds of food. And his bucket is purple. Just like this bucket here. So they weigh their food out every single day for each individual animal. Okay, so they let you out of the inside look inside of the exhibit. The wild arctic exhibit. These are, these are the harbor seals. Hi! It's here. We're in the wild arctic. And there's an ice wall. And it's real. And when COVID was happening, it wasn't here. And now it's here. You can rub your butt on it if you're really hot. Do it, Aaron. Pull yourself off. Ooh, that's your sea world cup. <laughs> it's really cool though. They had this at the Titanic Museum too, remember? Yep. It's like and an iceberg. It fell, like, oh yes, yeah, so it fell on somebody. Yeah, we have a lot of videos of the Gatlinburg and Puget Forge, Tennessee area if you're interested. We also have a lot of videos. Well, some videos here in Orlando. We've been here about a couple months, so check them out if you're interested. The wall's actually pretty big too. It's really long. Meh. Enough room for everybody's butt. They said Cora is in here, the two-year-old. No. go backstage. Me and Aaron did a tour here before of the backstage, like an actual tour that we paid for, where they have the pools in the back. I thought that's where we were going to go today, but unfortunately we didn't go that far back. They are beautiful though. We can hold our breath up for an hour. Wow. We got to feel them when we did the tour. Remember the beluga whale head? Yeah, with no shell. That's what the beluga whale head feels like. It was really cool. We got to feed it, take pictures of it. They're so, so cool. sweet. They're so sweet. And we got to feed a walrus. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, he is. She was just talking about him. He eats 56 pounds of food a day. Yeah. Big boy. He's yeah. a big boy. Big boy. <laughs> So we're heading into the Artisan's Hall, right over here next to the Guy Harvey shop, next to the Seafire Grill. Just got off the bridge and this is where we get our free pass holder magnets. Oh look, a Dolphins fan. How fun. So you just come up here, you, they scan your pass and you get your magnet. How cute is this magnet? It's so cute. Penguin. We for, love the penguins. For free. Thank you, SeaWorld. Thank you. Bye. Going on our stove. Yep. <laughs> the only place we have a magnetic service on the RV. Something else they have for our past members this year is they have different cups for every month of the year. They are $15. You can collect all 12. This is what they all look like. On August, Aaron's March. And you get a beluga whale. That's cute. And you get a shark. Super fun. Look at all these cute little wood pieces. They're all SeaWorld saying, SeaWorld's my happy place. I love you to SeaWorld and back. Oh, well, no place like SeaWorld. I love the nailed it with the hammerhead shark. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and, well, hello there. <laughs> all you so need fun. is love and SeaWorld. Super cute. You're totally Jawsome. <laughs> Aaron, I cheated on you last week. I came here with somebody special and I did the dolphin tour here at the nursery. We stood over there on that wall. Yeah, and guess and what? Kim did not film any of it, so sorry guys. <laughs> but it was really cool. We got the feed and pet all over the dolphins. It was a really, really cool experience. A lot of people bring toys and the dolphins love it. Here's a look at all the different events that SeaWorld's got going on this year. Next one is the Seven Seas Food Festival. We'll be here for that February 4th through May 8th. Then there's Electric Ocean over the summer. Then they have a craft beer festival August 5th through September 5th. And then Halloween. They have a hollow scream here September 9th through October 31st. And they have the trick-or-treating on the weekends, which is super fun. Even if you're uh, not a kid, you could still do it. I've done it many times as an adult. September 10th through October 31st. And then they have the Austin Sea World Christmas celebration. We were just here for that this year. We have a few videos of that. Make sure you check those out. And this year it's November 11th through December 31st. 
You excited for the Seven Seas Food Festival? I am. It's, it's I, we I love SeaWorld come festivals. We've to enjoy the festivals at SeaWorld more than the ones that I've caught. Yeah, because they are way cheaper. You get way more bang for your buck. The food is larger portion. Yeah, uh-huh. On point. Yeah. So I mean, but we do love the magic of Disney, so it, you know it's kind of a trade-off. But that's mm -hmm. terrifying. So if you're thinking about checking one out, do it. Okay, so we made it back over to number one, which is uh, where we started at the Inside Marine Mammal Care Station, and there's just a little bit of a line, so maybe we're gonna try and do it. Stick it out for it before we head out. So we're in line over there, and we're next to the flamingos, and they are all super frisky right now. They're making all sorts of noise. Are you excited to go in the fish house, Aaron? <laughs> so excited. We waited about a half an hour, 35 minutes, but we are now backstage and we're heading to the commissary where all the fishies are. And then and then we're gonna head out to Dolphin Cove and see the dolphins. But this is all backstage. Never been back here before. We've been to a lot of the other areas that we went today. But we're going in the fish house. Ooh, it's stinky. Filtration um, system. Today, when we are seeing our lagoon, it's not one of our larger exhibits, our water habitat. You can imagine some place like Dolphin Stadium or even Orca Stadium, which is uh, 7 million gallons of water. Um, it's going to need a facility a little bit larger to filter all of that water. So we're back on stage and we are heading to Dolphin Cove, which is right here. I want to pet a dolphin. Hopefully, we just pet a dolphin. But we learned that in the whole park every day that all the animals eat between three and five thousand pounds of fish every day. Mm, I'm so excited. Are you excited? I think this is gonna be the best part of our day. This was worth the 30 minute wait. Wow. That was fun start. So I'm going to ask you guys keep your hands on your side of the wall until I let you know it's safe to reach over that wall. These guys are over 300 pounds, so I don't want your hands to get caught between them and that wall. It would not be very fun for you. It would be a very sad time for your hands, okay? Now, when you are touching, I'm going to ask you guys to touch anywhere behind their blow hole. Okay, that's the hole on the top of their head. That's like their nose. Just like I'm sure you guys wouldn't have loved it if I came and rubbed your face with my fishy hands the first time I ever met you. I'm going to ask you don't do that to the dolphins, even though your hands are much cleaner than mine, okay? Um, if you want to touch their dorsal fin or their tail boots, you're more than welcome. That's all fair game. It's behind that wall, okay? Beautiful. Cool. He's waving at you wearing the blue and green shirt. You see him? Both of them be taking pictures of you. Everybody see him? Beautiful. That's where you guys are going to look for your group photos, and you're going to get a chance to check those out after the program. The dolphins will pose. It'll be beautiful, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Atlantic Bottlenose Dolphins. You guys are gonna be hanging out with uh, three of our lovely ladies. You guys are gonna be meeting Naya, Tinker, and Aurora. In this environment, we have 14 Atlantic Bottlenose Dolphins. Um, so we have nine females and five males. It is a mixed population. Uh, by your show of hands, who here is from Florida? Everybody's from Florida. <laughs> right, so if you guys are hanging out at the beach and you guys happen to see some dolphins off the coast of Florida, more likely than not, this is the species that you are seeing. We do have some other species like the rough boot dolphin, who tend to live off in our Florida waters, um, but those guys have a much smaller population. Uh, Atlantic auto nose dolphins are very healthy and thriving out there, so these guys are very common if you've ever been out on a boat. These dolphins are mm -hmm. guys um, and things like that. Now, like I was saying, this is a mixed population pod, but we do have one pod that is not a mixed population pod. It is our nursery pod up at the front of the park. That is our dolphin nursery, and it mimics a, a maternity pod out in the wild. So that pod is actually made up of Spark and Ember, our two calves. Spark is turning two in March, and Ember just turned one that month ago. Um, and then we have hair moms, as well as a couple other adult females. So just like they say with humans that it takes a village, it's the same thing with dolphins. It takes a village to teach a baby dolphin to be a dolphin. Um, so typically those moms will be the ones that nurse those babies. Dolphins do produce milk for their young and they do give birth to live young. And then the more experienced moms will come and lend them a flipper so that they know exactly how to take care of them. Aaron, that was so cool. so cool. That was by far the best one all day. Absolutely. We knew that this was going to be the best one we heard. We got the down low, and now you guys are going to have the down low. And then probably next year they're not going to do it because right. it's going to be so busy. Yeah, because this was this is brand new. This we year. got to. I got to pet. I got to pet all over that dolphin probably for like three minutes. It was laying on that wall, and I was just touching it and rubbing all over it, and it was amazing. And we got some cute pictures. And I already and I just did something similar to this on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm a dolphin. Dolphin fan in all the ways. <laughs> in all the ways I'm a dolphin. And they did take our picture with the dolphin, so you could buy the pictures if you want. So that's cool. It was basically like a free dolphin encounter tour. That's basically what that was. So that was really awesome. Here's a picture that we took, we're, we're buying it. We actually get a free digital download with our silver annual pass. So we've had a great time here for the inside oh look. God, it was so World. fun! Yeah, the dolphins, definitely, we don't have to like talk about it much. Dolphins, we're our favorite part, for mm -hmm. sure. Got a pet one, like that was amazing. Was so awesome. Yeah. And we just got our picture. I'll try to put it in. I think maybe I filmed a little bit because we bought, bought the picture. We got actually, we got it for free with our annual pass. We got a free digital download. So of us with awesome. the dolphin. So that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. But we've enjoyed our time here, like getting to see behind the scenes and like what, you know, things go on mm -hmm. that you don't realize. It's all so the special. Care, all the care yeah. that they take that goes into the does animals. such a great, a great job of taking care of their animals, keeping them stimulated and happy and healthy. So yeah, we really love this park. We do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is only a once a year event. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a twice a year event that they have going on though. But be sure to check out the inside look if uh, the dates are good for you guys. Yeah, last year was the first time that we did it, and mm -hmm. we definitely, as soon as we found out we could be here again, we were like, we're doing it. So I'm glad we checked it out, and we'll probably be back. Maybe they, this is running until Monday. It's um, Saturday right now. It's mm -hmm. going on until Monday. So maybe we'll come back and see something else or see the dolphins again. And we got I don't know. Here. Yes, free bear, oh yes. Free photo, free dolphin free bear. Pet. This whole weekend too, Friday day. to Monday. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can get a free bear. They get extra off after you get your drink. You saw that in the, earlier in the video. Mm -hmm. But it was really fun. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe. We do have videos again in this area for the next few months. So mm -hmm. we'll see you in the next episode. Bye guys. Bye.